be joined now on the line by Yvonne Peterson. Yvonne, good evening and thank you for your time tonight. What's your take on this topic? Uh, do you think uh, it will work? Um, good evening, Samuel, having me on your, on your show tonight. Um, you know, with, the, with this uh, social ground, it's not a problem to, to help one another, uh, the people that uh, do not have any income and that's unemployed. But um, I think also it's very good if they can create jobs for people because uh, if they have first, uh, 420 rent, uh, income in the 350 which they give to the unemployment people, it only lasts you maybe for three days, four days. Where is it you can get a job, that you can get the income at least maybe every week or every second week now they pay people when they've got jobs. Because um, for how long is this uh, social grant going to last? As they say, they're only going to give us this money for until in October. In October, then you're not going to have any income. And then it's the same thing again. Yeah. Because with this uh, pandemic that we're having now, uh, 350 is not a lot of money. Because sometimes you have to make a credit by somebody, for only 50 rand, 20 rand, yeah, you have to pay it out, and by the end of the day, it's not yeah. nothing more than 350 rand. Well, so uh, I was, uh, Yvonne, uh, you, the, the, base, the basic income grant is, is, is um, something completely different from the social relief or distress grant, which uh, they're going to be issuing until October. The universal basic income grant is a little bit more long term, uh, and uh, it's still unclear at this particular point what the proposed amount is going to be on it. Uh, so it is, it, it is a, a, a grant that will now be given to 18 and, and to, for, from those who are age, between the ages of 18 and 15. 59, of course, the modalities of it uh, still need to be outlined and be put on the table. Yeah, like, like me, uh, on my side, I did apply for that 350 rand, and they said, no, I, don't, I, didn't, I do not qualify for that 350 rand. Yeah. Because I, I get a grant for my grandson for 450 rand. Okay. And as I said, that 450 rand, it's not, you must look at, you must look at the child's school fees. He also wants something maybe in soccer, to food, and the 450 is gone. And it's right. gone. So, and right, for my right. age now, at the age of 56, I am not going to get a job now at this age or so. Right. Yeah, so, if they can give us a, a better income from the social grant, I would mind to have something better and for all the other people also that need that. But for the younger people, I would like and ask the government if they can get them really give everybody a job so that they can work. There's a lot of people that really want to work. Okay. Really. Yvonne, keep watching, okay? We'll do, interrogate and unpack this a little bit further, and hopefully you'll be able to get more information from it. And to interrogate the debate about the Universal Basic Income Grant for South Africa further, uh, here to tell us uh, how this grant is going to address poverty and inequality, we're joined by Isabel Fry. She's Director of, of the Studies in Poverty and Inequality Institute. Isabel, good evening, and thank you for your time tonight. Give more people the power to spend, and this is going going to, I suppose, solve the inequality issues in South Africa? Thanks, Tabo. I mean, it's a really good idea, and it was great that the minister was speaking to you earlier. The idea of a universal basic income grant, as you were saying to Yvonne uh, just a, a few minutes ago, is a lot broader than the current COVID grants or the children's grant for age, old age grants. So the idea being, if you do give more people the ability to spend, they'll stimulate the economy, as you say. But in addition to that, we've been seeing rising unemployment figures. I noted a lot of people asking why the government couldn't be creating jobs. We're in a structural crisis. So we have about 13 million people um, in formal unemployment. And in addition to that, we have rising numbers of people who've been retrenched. So the long-term um, long solution would be the creation of jobs. But the question is, how do we put food on the table for people right now? The idea of a cash grant to 18 to 59-year-olds means that people are eligible, they receive it, they don't fall through the cracks trying to prove their eligibility. And the secondary impact of people being able to spend means that the productive sector of society will be kick-started. So when you have people, um, poorer people spending money, uh, that, that money is generally spent on locally produced goods. When you have wealthier people spending, frequently what they spend is on imported goods. So we lose out on the job creation side. The economists who've done some of the modeling have shown that the secondary multipliers will soon pay for a vast amount of the cost to it um, from the initial cost.
So what you're saying then is this uh, is um, doing away with the means test uh, in a sense. And what happens to the already extensive social uh, uh, network that we have in the country, which really, uh, as the minister was saying, is, is far ahead uh, in terms of uh, advancement when compared to other countries? Um, compared to some of our neighboring countries, we do have a very advanced social security system. However, it was inherited from the apartheid system. So you have the inclusion of children and old age pensioners, but you don't have the inclusion of working age people uh, because of the job reservation for white people before 1994. So there's a huge hole in the middle of the social security system. With 18 million people currently receiving grants being older people and children and people living with disabilities, um, what, we would, what, what many people are arguing is that if you give 80 to 59-year-old people that job, then, um, then you basically cover people from the cradle, cradle to the grave. In addition, we do need to remember that this is a constitutional right. So in as much as access to health care, access to education, so is access to Social Security. And it's something which we've been looking at in NEDLAC for about the last eight years, how we can try and plug the gaps. The point about the crisis moment of COVID is that it seems that this might be the opportunity for us to seize in order to use a kickstart to the economy from the blow. Yeah. So it's a new way of thinking for many people, but it's about saying, let's take some of the stimulus package and put it uh, where people need to eat, where, where, where yeah. demand is needing to be supported. So what, what about uh, some of those issues that are being raised tonight uh, around, uh, well, in, in, industrialize, uh, give uh, the entrepreneurs more money, uh, let them work, and then they'll hire more people, and you'll have more people actually earning an income. Uh, are we uh, admitting, in a sense, that we won't be able to create uh, those necessary jobs uh, in South Africa? I think that we need to be quite um, comprehensive about this. So it's not about a binary, either jobs or social grants. We also need to understand that if we are investing in, re in sustaining and recovering uh, our productive and, and manufacturing sector, we need to have people who could buy that. In order to have people ultimately consumers, you need to have a value chain in which there is income going in. So what we're saying is fix that value chain, fix that demand chain from the bottom so that um, from people in households up to uh, the kind of purchasing in order to reach manufacturing, you have the oil in the machinery to let it go. Right now, we've got a huge number of, of those parts of machinery that are not working because we don't have that cash in the system to make it work. So this does seem to be the kind of stimulus that would enable people up to the manufacturing to be creating and so having those jobs made. Right now, you can't continue to manufacture if there's no one to purchase what you're making. Yeah. Well, I mean, around 2004, when this uh, idea first came up, um, I think the, the, the uh, fiscal position was less restrictive than it is right now. So the fiscal environment is a little bit tight at this point in time. You've got a shrinking tax base. You've got 300 billion rands shortfall that we're talking about as far as Treasury is concerned. How can it be financed? Uh, you're right. Very, uh, I mean, you, when, you, when you refer back to the historical moment when it was introduced, 2004 five, we had a, a surplus, a fiscal surplus. Um, now we're looking at uh, debt and increasing debt. I think what we have to acknowledge is that this is a critical moment. This is a crisis. The kind of orthodox economics um, of the past is not going to solve our problems and take us out of the, the crisis that we're in. So a number of people have identified areas in which we can look for the initial funding. So the initial funding for the first year would be the investment. As I said, the multiplier would bring it up. So looking at the GEPF, the Government Employees Pension Fund, um, and, and levering off of that, what many people have been saying is due to the inequality in this country, which you referred to at the beginning of our discussion, uh, we need to be looking at a wealth tax. There's a lot of idle wealth that city which is not being invested. So whether we have a COVID uh, grant, whether we offer COVID bonds, government bonds in order to raise additional income, I think the real question is, if we don't do this now, will we be able to recover in the way that we want to in order to, to reach, the, make good the deficit that we've got? Or are we going to continue to slide down without having any recovery? It is a really important decision. It's a courageous decision. But I think the danger of not making this decision 
is going to land us in a lot worse uh, future than we currently are facing. Isidore Fry, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us tonight.